Uh, I'd be interested to know what, uh, what scares you in your job, because I think doctors are always seen as these brave citizens of the world working for <laughs> New South Wales Health. But, uh, you know, there are some scary moments in every, uh, in a, in every kind of physician and, and clinical job. Um, so personally for you, do, do you ever get scared or have you just got like that kind of protocolized ability to assess any kind of chaos? No. no, I think if you don't feel a bit of emotion probably every day, then you probably should stop being a doctor. Right. I think it's an emotional um, profession and you f human beings feed off other people's emotions. You see that in kids and... Um, and mostly patients have some emotions floating around when you see them. So I think if you don't have lots of different emotions during a day, maybe you should take a holiday or, or think about another career. Mm. Um, so, and, and yeah, medicine is scary because it's all the gray, right? It's not black and white, mostly. There's some easier bits to the day and there are some harder bits. Um, but I was just talking to a colleague um, earlier who is going up to theatre to an East Eyes, a 90 year old patient for a carotid stent. I mean, that's going to fill anyone with anxiety, even if you're the person who helps anesthetize people for carotid stents every day. Yeah. So um, I think there's, uh, there's always apprehension, especially if it, there is uncertainty. And I think medicine is full of uncertainty. I think that's why often people find it a hard specialty is if they're not comfortable dealing with a bit of uncertainty. And you've got to um, compartmentalize it to some degree. Mm. And sometimes you have to make decisions uh, where you've got to remove some of the emotion from those processes. And that's where you know, cognitive aids and training and protocols can help. Um, but if you forget that there is a patient, another human being at the center of all this, then yeah, you, you, as I say, you're probably in the wrong job. When was the last time you felt that kind of fear? Like, did, have you had any? Mm. Probably yesterday, recent, I'm just yeah. trying to think. Uh, well, yesterday, a, um, I was running the, the floor, so I was the duty anaesthetist. Uh, and yeah, what there was... That, what does that mean? For, um, does that mean you're in charge of all the theatres as a kind yeah. of central... Outside work and the, the, um, sh the staffing of inside. So you make sure things are running smoothly. Right. Um, and more and more, our job as anaesthetist is sort of being pushed out of theater and pulled into the other critical care area arenas. Um, lots of anesthetics now get given um, in satellite areas like MRI and CT and cath lab. Uh, but we also go down to ED and help with um, some of the sick patients who either need support down there or indeed need to come to theater. And there were a couple of those patients yesterday. Um, the nice thing, one of the nice things of, that has come out of COVID, I think, if there can be nice things, is that uh, different silos of subspecialty have come together and are more used to interacting with each other. So my relationships with my colleagues in ED are much stronger because of the need to address the pandemic. Uh, same with intensive care. So I think our jobs in general are made easier by um, having um, lines of communication and relationships with people in those other areas. And so my job was made very much more easy yesterday because I knew lots of people down there. You know who to talk to. Yeah. yeah. Before you were talking about how if you don't feel emotion, you know, you're probably burnt out. Uh, have you ever like suffered from burnout in your career or had colleagues or close friends who've yeah. been burnt out and how did you kind of resolve that if it was resolved? Yeah, like a little bit of, of both, right? You definitely see colleagues and there's some support. I, I, I think burnout is a sort of the extreme that we, people often talk about extremes of whether it be health or um, uh, mental health or physical health, but actually it's all a continuum, right? So yeah. some days you feel more stressed than others and some days you feel more saturated and I think it's about managing that. It's the sort of small things on sort of daily or weekly basis. Uh, I definitely felt under the pump at the end of my anaesthetic training, which is one of the reasons we came over to Sydney for a fellowship abroad is to have a bit of downtime with 
two kids. Hey, if you want more highlight clips of the Doctors Getting Coffee podcast, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and make sure you hit the bell icon next to it to get notifications whenever there's a new highlight clip. I'm releasing sometimes four or even five clips per week. Then make sure you hit that button. Now, if you wanna watch the entire video podcast, consider becoming a Patreon or a YouTube member to support the channel and you will get as one of your special privileges, access to the entire video podcast library. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.